All right, guys, let's keep discussing control loop diagrams. And hopefully by going through a few of these examples, you'll be able to get your head around each of these different terms. So this first one is just a residential furnace. So we've got a thermostat on the first floor. Our set point for this example is 20 degrees. And we're trying to keep track of the temperature in the house. So let's see, the, basically the process and control variable, what we're trying to control, well, that's obviously temperature. Okay, 99% of the time, what you're trying to control is what you're trying to measure. You can see here that our temperature sensor is right here. So our measured variable, we're measuring temperature. And 99% of the time, what you're trying to control is what you're measuring. The set point, well, that's arbitrary for everybody. But in this case, in this written example, our set point is going to be 20 degrees C. The sensor, well, it's a temperature sensor. So we've talked about three different types of te temperature sensors. We have the thermocouple, we have the RTD, and we have the thermistor. So the thermostat is quite small. <clears throat> it's basically just a solid state chip that's looking at that input. And mounted on that chip is a thermistor. A thermistor basically changes resistance as the temperature changes in the room. The controller, well, the controller for this guy is the thermostat. The final control element, well, that's what we're turning on. And again, there's three things that we can turn on. We can turn on a valve, we can turn on a, a motor, or we can turn on a heater, right? In this case, it's a, a natural gas furnace. So our final control element, um, it depends on how you look at it. It could be the gas valve, could be the blower motor. Right? There's multiple stages now to, to furnaces, so it depends on how you're looking at it. The manipulated variable, so what are we changing? So in this case, right, we're, we're manipulating gas flow. Right? By opening and closing that valve, we're manipulating, manipulating gas flow. If you're talking about the blower motor, right, well, then we're manipulating airflow through the ducts. Again, depends on, there's multiple ways you can answer these guys. Uh, fuel for those guys. Well, for either one of those guys, we're sending current to either the valve. So I don't know if my pen will work down here. We're sending <coughs> current to either the valve or the blower motor. Okay, that leaves us with disturbances. So disturbances are just things that are in this uh, loop um, that we haven't put a sensor in to look at. So if we're trying to control the temperature in the house, everything's cool, it gets to the right temperature, but then somebody walks in and opens up the door, or somebody on the second floor starts to open up a window. So those would be disturbances, and there's no way that we could put a sensor in, but as soon as that disturbance comes in, that cold air hits the thermostat, and all of a sudden, turns on the furnace to try to compensate for that. So disturbances for this guy, we'll just put it up here. Someone opens the door. Okay, anything that's there that we haven't really put a sensor in to look at. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Okay, next one is a sump pump. So in this guy, we've got a uh, sump pump, it's got a float switch that's in there, and it says when the liquid level in the sump gets too high, the upper level float switch closes, turning on the pump until the lower switch returns it to shelf state. Okay, so we've got a sump thing where we have two different limit switches here, a high and a low limit, and it all looks like it's being controlled by this little control panel on the side here. So what we're trying to control is level. We're trying to control the level in the sump pit. What are we measuring? Well, we've got <clears throat> our two float switches here, and they are directly looking at the level in that tank. Again, 99% of the time, what you're trying to control is what you'll end up being measuring. The set point. Well, the set point is where we want to be. So do we, it's a simple thing. Do we want to be at the higher limit or the lower limit? In this case, we want to be at the lower limit. Okay, the sensor. Well, the thing that's turning the, the pump on and off would be our float switch. Okay, 
The controller. Well, there's a control panel up there. It depends on how you're looking at this. If this is just simply a float switch that's controlling the, the pump, then essentially the sensor, the float switch, is also the controller as well, right? There's nothing else in the circuit. Final control element. Well, that's one of three things, a valve, a motor, or a heater. Well, this time we're turning on a pump. So that would obviously be an example of a motor. What are we manipulating? Well, we're manipulating current to the pump. Again, what type of fuel are we using? We're using current as our power source to our pump. And then disturbances. Well, that's something that's going to screw up the system. Everything's working fine, but then something screws it up and it doesn't react properly. So it could be anything. It could be uh, a faulty pump. Right? That's definitely going to give us issues. Right? Or we could have a faulty float switch. If that float switch doesn't work properly, then this whole circuit, oops, <clears throat> this whole circuit is done. All right, hopefully it's starting to make sense to you with all these different terms. Let's take a look at the next example, guys. Heat exchanger. So liquid is being heated from 80 to 100 degrees Celsius by a steam flow heat exchanger. Hot steam sent through a coil within the vessel. The amount of steam flow is controlled by a variable solenoid valve on the incoming inlet pipe. And an RTD temperature sensor is placed in the outlet pipe to monitor the temperature of the heated liquid. All right, so what are we trying to control? It looks like we're trying to control the temperature from that heat exchanger, right? So again, we're trying to control temp. What are we measuring? Well, we are using an RTD temperature sensor. So we're measuring temperature. Again, 99% of the time, those two are going to be the same. What's the set point? Uh, it's being heated from 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. So our set point, we're looking for 100 degrees Celsius. The sensor we just said was an RTD, a resistance temperature detector. Again, similar to a thermistor in that it changes resistance uh, with a changing temperature being applied to the sensor. The controller, who knows what the controller is, right? There's some local controller that's there. Right? It doesn't give us uh, any uh, indication as to what that is. It could be a local uh, indicator. It could be a PLC. Right? It doesn't give us any more information other than there's something there that's controlling that circuit. Final control element. Well, <clears throat> that's either going to be a motor, a valve, or a heater. In this case, we're modulating a valve. And actually, that's the, the most common thing that we're going to be controlling. I always thought it was a motor, but most of the time, the signal is being sent to a valve. What are we manipulating? Well, we're manipulating steam flow, right? We're changing the amount of steam flow. Okay, the fuel. I guess in order to uh, to open and close that, that valve, it doesn't tell us what uh, that signal is, right? So, I mean, again, we could put, uh, could put current there, right, for opening and closing that valve, but it doesn't say whether it's a pneumatic valve or whether it's an electrical valve. We need a little bit more information there. Okay, a disturbance. Well, anything that's there that we haven't put uh, a sensor in to look at, right? So again, we can just choose any of the components in that circuit and say that it's faulty, right? So we could say that we have a, a faulty Pro let's say it's a faulty RTD transmitter, right? Maybe they are, because the RTD is just a piece of wire, so it's not going to really fault on us, but maybe the transmitter has crapped out on us, right? Or maybe we have a faulty valve. The valve is getting stuck at certain positions and it can't do its full uh, motion from totally closed to totally open. All right, let's try it on the next one, guys. Now again, I'm kind of flying through this, so you may want to stop the, uh, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but you may want to stop the, the video at each one, read through the example, try to answer yourself, and then go through with me. But again, we're just taking the stuff up we did in class. All right, next one, tank level. 
So in this example, the level in the tank is to be maintained at 85%. So if you want, as you're reading through, you can drop in all your values, right? So the set point there is 85% of the tank level. Okay, and then we've taken care of this. The fluid level of a tank is monitored by a differential pressure sensor, a DP cell. So the sensor is going to be a differential pressure cell. So we may not have done that uh, lab yet, but as the, the liquid tank, liquid in the tank increases, then the pressure that's exerted by that column of water or anything, whatever liquid is in there, uh, is exerting itself on the base of the tank. If we put a pressure sensor in here, and this guy right here is called a differential pressure cell. It's looking at the difference between the pressure that develops on the inside of the tank and the other side, it's looking at atmospheric pressure. And by looking at the difference there, it has some sensing element there and it takes, takes into account the pressure, changes it into a four to 20 milliamp current and then pumps out a current to the controller. Okay, so again, does it tell us what the controller is? It doesn't really tell us anything in there, right? So who knows what the, the controller is again? It could just be uh, a set of relays, right? It could be a PLC, could be a number of things in there. Okay, the final control element. Uh, in order to maintain a set level in the tank, a 4 to 20 milliamp signal is sent from the controller to our level control valve. So again, we've got a current going to our valve. And our final control element is just that. We're opening and closing the valve. Okay, the manipulated variable. Well, what are we manipulating? Well, we're, we're manipulating current uh, to the valve, right? <clears throat> and by manipulating current to the valve, that will allow that tank to drop out, right? Drop all that liquid out, out of there. Because it looks like this valve right here is for uh, taking away anything in the tank. Okay, the fuel, again, we can just play that we're using current to the valve. And have we missed anything? Oh, we missed the main thing, the process control variable. Well, this is the one where it's not the same. We're obviously looking at, we're trying to control the level in the tank, right? But are we actually directly looking at the met, that level in the tank? No, we're looking at a pressure that develops at the base of the tank. And from that pressure, we're inferring the level. On the previous example with the float switch, the level would directly affect the sensor. Right? By moving that tank level up and down, then we open and closed those float switches. In this case, the measured variable is the hydrostatic head pressure. at the base of the tank. Right, so this is one where you're not directly looking at the level, you're looking at the pressure that develops at the base of the tank, and from there you're inferring the level. So 99% of the time, what you're trying to control is what you're looking at, or what you're measuring. In this case, we're not exactly looking at level. We don't have, um, you know, a thing that's monitoring the exact level, we're looking at the hydrostatic head pressure. Um, it is a level transmitter, so you could say you're looking at the level, but you are looking at the pressure that develops at the base of the tank and then inferring the level from there. Any disturbances? Could be anything, guys, right? <clears throat> With this guy, we'll just say it's a faulty valve. Anything in there that we haven't put a sensor in to look at. All right, guys, that's all I got for you for loop diagrams. Next thing we got to talk about is the signal that's going from the, the sensor back to the controller, right? Because the sensor's tied into a transmitter. The transmitter sends a standardized signal back to the controller, which we said is normally 4 to 20 or 0 to 5 volts uh, DC. So I just found this awesome uh, thing online. It's at uh, www.predig.com. They've got a number of white papers there. They go through the topics that we're talking about in class. I'll put the link in the bottom. 
Um, but we'll start talking about next uh, video on 4 to 20 milliamp currents. Thanks, guys.